All right, some of you requested um, the uh, list list videos, um, <clears throat> which is something I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, actually, when I first started this channel, one of the primary things I was going to do would be like reviews of like movies and TV shows and music and you know all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, as you probably know for the title today, we're going to delve into theme parks. That we're going to start off the list series with the top ten, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So this time it's going to be top ten best um, attractions at Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida. Uh, I'm I'm uh, what you call a WDW connoisseur. Uh, I've been to Walt Disney World more times than I can count. I live two hours away from it, so you know I go there a lot. I don't have a pass right now, but um, I yeah I still remember being there vividly. So this is as of July of 2019 because I know the parks are ever changing. Um, it's already been a minute, so let's just cut right to the sandwich here. It's a very bare bones thing you know most of the time with these kind of lists it, you don't really look at the um <coughs> you know you, it is, you know you don't like see their face or anything it's just like you know stock pictures of the attraction they're talking about or like you know footage or something like that well i don't have any of that and there's no editing on this channel so whatever yeah here you go anyway so i'm in the half in uh so animal kingdom number 10 uh I'm going to give the number 10 spot to Primeval Whirl. Now, you know, I know what you're thinking. Primeval Whirl, why does that deserve to be on the top 10 list? Isn't that just like a, isn't that just like a, a, a carnival ride, like a fair ride? Well, yeah, I mean, technically, if you go to a fair, probably not just like your typical county fair, but, you know, if you go to like <coughs> a regional fair, like, you know, south, insert state name or province or whatever, fair or north or east or west or you know whatever um or a state fair um or just like a, a county with a high you know uh population um you'll probably encounter a similar ride it, it goes by many names sometimes it's you know mighty mouse crazy cat cool cat crazy mouse something like that you know it goes by a lot of names depending on which company's putting it on but yeah it's a similar ride but i i, I don't know I, it's fun first of all it's fun i mean i like that ride but Disney just just does you know it's it's the it's the mouse on steroids you know in the in the home of the mouse in the house of mouse so primeval world you know it puts a, a nice little spin on it it's it's I mean Dino Land is supposed to be kind of carnival themed so you know I mean and that that happens to be a, a soft spot for me because I love fairs you know, just about everything about them so um, but I know a lot of people don't want to feel like they're at a fair and going on portable rides when they're at you know the Disney World so. That's understandable, but I don't. I don't think they overdo it. I think Primeval World's a good ride. It's fun. It's entertaining, and it's really the turbo edition of a beloved attraction for me. So <coughs> that's why it made the list. All right, number nine. Um, uh, for number nine, I'm going to put. Let's see. Hmm. All right, number nine's going to be. It's tough to no. Number nine's going to be. Uh, Mirage on a Jungle Trek. I probably butchered that name, but the Jungle Trek. Um, this is the only walking trail that's going to be on this list. Um, you know, I've I've done at least two other walking trails. I've done Gorilla's Falls Exploration Trail and Pangani Forest Expedition Trail. Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail is just not worth your time. Just don't even bother. Pangani Forest Expedition Trail is good, but it's not as good as Mirage on a Jungle Trek. It, it takes the cake. There's the most to look at. Um, there's also Discovery Island Walking Trails. I've, I haven't done that yet, um, so I can't really give a review on that. But um, Mirage on a Jungle Trek is is definitely... It's a, it's a good idea. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you go at your own pace. I, I just... I like those kind of things. I like nature trails, you know, walking trails... Um, of any kind, really. I, I like walking. I like trails. I like walking trails. I like animals. So it's it's got everything you're looking for. Uh, they got, you know, Komodo dragons. They got tigers. They got, you know, fish. They got birds. They got, you know, reptiles. Like, they got a lot of animals. There's always something there. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes it can be really entertaining. You can actually feel like you're looking at an actual nature documentary throughout the glass, or through, you know, through the glass of the windows, and you can narrate it yourself, you know, so, uh, it's about 15 to 20 minutes, usually, 
um, depending on how fast you walk. <coughs> but, um, yeah, the Mirage in a Jungle Trek, the best walking trail there. It's worth your time. I give it a try. Number eight, I'm going to put, let's see, which one here? number eight is going to be, uh, it's tough to be a bug is going to be number eight. So this is Animal Kingdom's only 3D show. And I know you're thinking like, oh, come on, really? Like that? Why Why does that make the top 10 list? Well, I'll tell you. I mean, it, it, I'll be honest. I like it. It's it's entertaining. I think it's entertaining. Um, to me, it kind of reminds me of like, like what Shrek 4D is to Universal Studios in Orlando. It's tough to be a bug is to Animal Kingdom, I feel like. It's just that it gives me that kind of vibe. Um, it's based on, it's a bug's life, or, a, a bug's life, yeah, it's based on a bug's life, the movie, and, um, you know, I, I, I like, you know, it's continuous shows throughout the day, it's not a whole, like, you know, kerfuffle about it, like, uh, designated show times, you know, I gotta show up, it's every, you know, 90 minutes or whatever, um, and, you know, I like the cue for it, it's a lot of walking, it's kind of like a trail in and of itself, there's no real animals, they're just, you know, carvings and trees, which is still, you know, fun to look at, um, I think you go through a cave at one point, but, um, you know, and then you get there, and there's this whole, like, lobby waiting area, and they got, like, pictures on the walls and props and stuff, and there's a lot of, like, you know, clever jokes and puns and jabs and stuff, you know, that's the part, you know, one of the things that reminds me of uh, Shrek at Universal Studios, um, <clears throat> but before you know it, it's showtime, and then it's like a 15-minute show, it's, it's 3D, um, and, but, but they don't, you know, they don't just, like, do what you'd expect from a 3D show and just a bunch of cliche, you know, cheap 3D tricks, I mean, there's some animatronics in there, there's some, like, there's some stuff in the seat, I don't want to spoil it if you've never seen it before, but, you know, it, it's it's mostly screen oriented, but it's it is interactive, um, and you know it's it's fun. It's 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 just a neat, cool little thing to do. It's not like the best or anything, but you know it, you, you should do it at least once. Um, you know, it's a fun time. So number seven, I'm going to give to Nave River Journey. This is a controversial one. Everyone either loves it or hates it. Now, for me, it's neither. Um, Firstly, let me explain you. Let me ex explain to you why it's even on the top ten list. Because for a lot of people, a lot of people I know, it it wouldn't make the list. It's bottom of the barrel for them. So let me let me justify why it's on this list and why it's number seven instead of eight, nine, or ten. <coughs> the the theming for this ride is is phenomenal. It's based on Avatar, and regardless of what you think of that movie, you gotta admit it's it's visually appealing and the whole world that they create it, it takes talent so to make in a ride much less an entire land out of that is something only disney could pull off um and they i'm really impressed at how they did that well i made a comment the the first time uh that i went there when it first opened that it looked like a minecraft world because you know they, they got the like the rocks and the sky and everything and like you know the weird looking plants and stuff but um they are really creative with it some of those things are, like, real plants that just ha are, like, painted and, like, sculpted to look a certain way. And they have, like, bioluminescent things that light up at night. And they got, like, smell machines that blow scents into the air. Like, it's just incredibly immersive. Way more than it has to be. And the same for this ride, too. It's it's very immersive. And it's it's very calming. It's relaxing. Um, you know, I, I like dark rides. I like boat rides. You know, um, I, it does it really well, um, I think, you know, like, just everything to look at. They, it, it, 10 out of 10 for, for visuals, for stuff to look at, for how good of a job they did with all the props, you know, all the scenery, 10 out of 10. Unfortunately, the 10 out of 10s run out there. <coughs> so let me explain to you now why it's not number one, why it's not in the top five or top six. All right, first of all, there's too many uh, boats. I know it's a popular ride and they need to accommodate people, but in my opinion, convenience should never be at the expense of enjoyability. I would rather wait longer for a better ride. You know, um, I the fact that, you know, you're practically touching the boat in front of you and the boat behind you is practically touching you, it kind of takes away from it to me. You know, it's like, 
a never-ending chain of people. I don't want to look at people. I want to look at the scenery, you know? So I feel it kind of takes away from that a little bit. Um, but, that you know, that's a minor thing. Another one is that it's kind of bland. And I know it's supposed to be calming. It's supposed to be simple. But I mean, like, geez, even the Frozen ride at Epcot has, like, a little drop in it. You know, like, it's, it's, getting, it's got something at least. You know, a part that it goes a little bit faster for. But this one's got nothing. And I know the original blueprints for the ride had it, you know, as, like, a... Uh, parts of the Caribbean type of ride, where, you know, you might get a little little water cannon here or there, you know, not, not oh, excessive, but, you know, maybe one, and, like, you know, there's a little a drop, you know, you maybe get your picture taken or something, you know, like, there, there was, you know, like, it, it was more, um, you know, it, it just, I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I mean, um, and I think the way it turned out, there were budget cuts and everything, and now it's just, kind of, it's flat, and the track layout kind of reminds me of, like, one of those portable haunted house rides at fairs, you know, where it's like they try to maximize the little space they have, you know, and just, like, keep, like, curving around and just, you know, doing this, so, you know, because, and so, you know, also, it starts and ends way too abruptly. There's no transition between scenes at all. The whole thing's, like, basically one big scene. There's no storyline, and that's that's one thing that's one thing I always like about theme park rides is they're themed. It's a theme park, and don't get me wrong, it's certainly themed. It, you definitely feel like you're in Pandora, but there's no story. You know, you're not taking part in a story. You know, it's not like you know, come with me to the whatever. You know, like it, there's no direct interaction with the with the audience. It's like it's like you're invisible. It's like you're a ghost. You know, and you're just watching you're just exploring this you know unknown and unseen which can work but again there should be at least something then you should like observe dialogue between animatronics or you know even character projections on a screen or something but there's just there's not really anything it's just like ooh ah that's that's cool that's impressive to look at and all right you know that's fine for like a minute or two but six minutes of just that it's like you kind of leave a little disappointed i mean you know, it, it, there's no, like I said, there's not really a beginning or an end. The way the ride ends, it just, like, feels like, they're, you know, they didn't have time to finish it before they had to open it or something like that. You know, it's like, it's it's so rushed. Um, but, yeah, that, so those are the complaints I have. But overall, it's an okay ride. And like I said, just the visuals and the theming enough are, alone, are enough to get it to the number seven spot. So, <coughs> Rave River Journey number seven. Make of it what you will. All right, number six, I'm going to give to Kali River Rapids, or Kali, whatever. Kali River Rapids, um, their only water ride, Disney's only water ride, really. I mean, if you want to count Splash Mountain, that, to me, that's right on the border of a water ride. It depends if they have it in full turbo gear, you know, for the summer or not. Most of the time, it's not really, you know, you, you get wet, sure, but you don't get drenched. Kali River Rapids, you get drenched. You get soaked to the bone. There's no, there's no escaping it. It's basically uh, like Popeye and Bluto's Build Your At Barges at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Orlando. They do that, but they do it better. Um, they do it Disney style. So it's a, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a really cool water ride. I've only been on it once or twice, but I remember it vividly. It's different every time. It's a free floating um, spinning circular uh, raft thing. It, it, the, the vehicle looks pretty much identical to Popeye and Bluto's Build Your At Barges. But there's like eight different tracks it can go on, and it's pretty much selected at random, like it's whatever one it drifts towards. And, you know, there's very, like the track is very wide and accommodating, like it's not, it's not like one of those boat rides where it's just, you know, you can kind of feel it, you know, making the turn and it's, you know, grinding against the rails or anything. It's, there's none of that. It's very loose and free-flowing, so you feel like you're in an actual river you know, on an actual, like, boat or raft or something, and the water moves slow enough to actually be convincing. Like, sometimes if it moves too fast, it kind of, you know, takes you out of it because it's like, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, it it, it feels very realistic, but obviously you, you get a lot wetter than you would if it was an actual river, and there's a lot more, like, turbulence and stuff like that. But that's what makes it fun. It feels like a legitimate water park attraction. Not that I've ever been to a water park, but I know, you know, what they're like. I, I, I know what, you know. So it feels like an actual water park attraction, and it's fun for water enthusiasts like me, uh, ride enthusiasts like me. I mean, I'm in all their demographics. 
Uh, this one's a real wild card as far as the wait times. Uh, sometimes when everything else has a two-hour wait, it's a walk-on. And other times when everything else is a walk-on, it has a two-hour wait. So it's seemingly random. It's kind of a wild card, like I said. <coughs> but, um, you know, it's I, I'd, I'd say it's worth it. I mean, the key is pretty cool, uh, from what I remember. It's, it's a lot of walking, even on the fast pass. But, you know, you get there. It's constantly moving ride. Uh... You know, I mean, the, the one drawback to it, I guess, would be that you get wet, which I don't mind, but I know a lot of people, you know, just don't like, you know, water, I guess, you know, or it, they don't like getting wet. So, yeah, if you don't like getting wet, you're going to want to sit this one out. But uh, otherwise, go for it. It's a great ride. All right, number five. Let's see here. Number five, I'm giving two. Uh, hmm. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Festival of the Lion King. So, yeah, this is, um, you know, spoiler alert, this is the best show at Animal Kingdom. There's not going to be any shows in the top four. Um, <coughs> it, it's, it's great. It's like, it's, it's an acrobatic show. So, finally, you, it's a sigh of relief. You don't, it's not like a, another screen show. It's not another 3D thing, you know. It's a, it's a live, you know performance by real people and um you know i just saw it recently and because it's 2019 it's the 25 25th anniversary of the original lion king movie which is what it's based on uh they just re-released it uh you know a few weeks ago for summer of 2019 it was like the extra you know super duper gooper you know uh, good turbo version, you know, so, um, uh, but I'm sure, you know, it'll go back to, to normal soon, but even then, it's a great show, it's, it's high energy, um, you know, spectacular performances, uh, it's, it's, it's like, uh, it's like Cirque du Soleil, or you know, Blue Man Group, like, it's, it's up there, it's, it's on that tier of entertainment, um, it's, it's a, it's a nice half hour long, so, you know, it's decent length. They do all the songs from the movie. And, um, but it's not, it's not like in a, it's not in an annoying way. Like a lot of the shows that theme parks have, you know, where it's just like, oh, let's make a musical out of this beloved franchise. And, you know, it just, it turns out just being annoying. You know, it, it's not like that. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just fun and it's cool and it's engaging. It's entertaining to watch and it's immersive. There's interaction with the crowd but not excessive. It's just right. It's a good show. It's a very good show. It's the best at Animal Kingdom. Uh, watch it. It's worth your time. All right. <coughs> Number four, Dinosaur. <coughs> ah, yes, the classic Dinosaur. I love this ride. I, I just love it. Everything about it. I mean, it feels like it's based on a movie, but it's not. That's how good it is. Um, <laughs> I, I want to see Dinosaur the movie now, you know? Like, yeah, why haven't they done that? Um, but, um, you know, it seems people are kind of moving on from this ride. It's not really one of the more popular attractions anymore. It closes, like, two hours before the park now. And, like, you know, it's kind of, like, fading into obscurity. But I, I, I want to save it. I hope they don't get rid of it. I'm one of its biggest fans. Um, it's a great ride. I love the pre-show. Um, I, it, I never fail to, to, you know... I'm still not sick of it. And most pre-shows, you know, I get sick of. But not that one. It's a, it's a good one. Um, it, it feels realistic. Like, it feels like an actual scene from Dinosaur the Movie, you know? Um, which doesn't exist to the best of my knowledge. If it does, please let me know. Because I'm not aware of any Dinosaur the Movie from Disney. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, and the queue's like a museum thing. It looks really realistic. Like, it actually feels like you're in a museum. Um... So it's just really unique. Like, that's a bold step, you know? Uh, that's one thing I respect about Epcot is that, you know, until they ruined it with, you know, the Finding Nemo ride and now Frozen, nothing there was based on movies. It's all just original content. And that's one thing about Animal Kingdom is Dinosaur is a prime example of that done well. Not everything at a theme park has to be based on a movie, you know, for it to take off. Dinosaur is a smash hit. And, you know, like, in the ride, it's like, it's the perfect mix of mild and wild. 
It's not a boring, bland ride, you know. It moves you around. It's on the hydraulics and everything, but it's not a roller coaster, you know. It's not Everest. It's not rock and roller coaster. It's not, you know, like, it's not one of those, like, it's not a ride that would be too intense for a lot of people. It's a ride just about anyone can go on, but it's still thrilling, you know, and it's, you know, I'm a sucker for those dark rides, you know, where, like, something pops at you, you did there's a few, like, borderline jump scares, and, like, you know, there's animatronics, there's dinosaurs everywhere, and it's kind of educational, too. It's like, oh, this is the, you know, whatever, this is the turbo, you know, rhinosaurus or whatever, you know, like, all the different dinosaurs. So it's it's kind of educational, but that's not really what, it, what it's going for. But it's an engaging, it's a clear storyline, it's fun, it, you know, it, it moves in a linear fashion, it's just the right length. It's just the right pacing. It's just the right intensity. It's just a good ride. I don't really have any complaints about it. It's just it's just a good ride, you know. So I it's 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 a real fun time. Please go on it. You'll you'll like it. All right, number three. Uh, number three, I'm giving to Kilimanjaro Safaris, and I know like oh yeah, what a cliche choice, Joshua. Of course, the the blasted safaris are going to be on here, but let me tell you why. It's not just like, oh, look, animals, oh, you know, oh, I get a picture, how cute. Like, it goes, it goes way beyond that. I mean, yeah, that too. But also, it's different every time. And I mean it's radically different every time. First of all, your experience can depend drastically upon the driver. And it's a different... I, I've, been, I've been on that ride dozens of times, and I've yet to get the same driver twice. So... You know, that, and that changes your experience drastically because there's different, like, horses you can go on. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of parts of the track that you'll, you know, go through no matter what. But it is a different route that they can take depending on the driver and how they feel and what the, you know, the line's like and all that. And the time of day it is and, like, what the animal activity's like. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, they, they radio in to the other trucks, like, oh, don't go over here, keep them away from this area. Why don't you go over here, you know, the, the lions are active, or, you know, the, the elephants are out, or, you know, whatever. Um, but you see a lot of animals, it's it's impressive, and it really does, like, they, they did a really good job making it look like it's actually the scenery that they're going for, you know, the the, the savanna, you know, the grasslands, the desert, the uh, the swamp. You know, they don't have a mountain segment. I wish they did. And I wish they had an I wish they had an aquatic segment too. That would be cool. But I understand they can't do everything. But um it's mostly it's mostly the savannah, it's mostly the grasslands. Um but like I said, an all in one safari, that would just be great. Like travel travel the world in twenty minutes and see like I mean I I could definitely picture that being something that they would do. But um, you know, for what it is though, it's great. If it was that, it would definitely be number one. But, you know. So, uh, number three, it's a, it's a, it's a good length. It's like a solid 25 minutes. Um, and that, you know, it feels like a long time when you're on it. It's like, you, you know, you get your, your money's worth, you get your time's worth with that one. And it's educational, you know, there's little like trivia, fun facts about the, you know, each animal you see and everything. Um, and it's just great. And, you know, it's immersive. Uh, you can't see any of the other attractions from while you're on it, you know, so it's like a self-contained experience, which is exactly what I want. You know, it's it's 110 acres, like, it's it's really big, you know? It's it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a bumpy ride, which a lot of people complain about, but I actually like it, um, you know? And the queue is long, too. It's not that impressive, but it, you know, it's thematically appropriate, at least, so I'll give them that, you know? So <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a really good ride, and whatever you want, you're going to find it there. It's... Like, you know, they crack some jokes, like Jungle Cruise style on there, you know. I consider it, it's like the Jungle Cruise, but better because it's got all real animals and it's actually educational and, you know, it's it's longer, it's it's better. And, you know, the track, it's, you know, it's more, oh, whatever, it's, it's, a, it's a good ride. It's a very good ride. It's a great ride. Go on Kilimanjaro Safaris when you're on Animal Kingdom. It's worth your time. All right, number two. Expedition Everest, and I know a lot of you are already disappointed. Oh, come on. Why wasn't that number one? Hey, nothing against that ride. I have nothing but good to say about it. It's just that my number one pick is that good. Um, and it barely wins by a hair, too. It's a really close. It's neck and neck. They're practically tied, but, you know, I think 
making a tie on a top ten list would just be like cheating. But um, number two, yeah. So Everest, behold the most expensive attraction that Disney World has ever built, I believe, that's open so far as of July 2019, and the most expensive roller coaster in the United States, I think. Um, it, it's awesome. It's a textbook example of a roller coaster done right. You know, it's got... I mean... Jeez, if you haven't been on this thing or at least seen footage of it yet, I feel sorry for you. Where have you been? you got to go on Expedition Everest. Um, and it's not just the Yeti. I mean, that's kind of overhyped, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, it's cool. I got to high-five him a few times if I'm sitting on the right side. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it's not it's not just that you don't see the Yeti very much. You see, like, a little shadow thing for a few seconds, and then you see the actual animatronic for, like, two seconds at the very end. But um, <coughs> it's, it's just the, the whole track. You know, like, it feels like a Bush Gardens kind of roller coaster, but, like, way better, you know, because it's actually themed. Bush Gardens is just an amusement park, you know, Disney's a theme park. So, um, you know, it starts off, you know, like, kind of getting you into it. There's a few, like, little, you know, drops and turns and stuff. And then you go up this big, intimidating-looking chain lift, and then you go, like, through the mountains a little bit, you know, and then you go, like, oh, it's a dead end, and, you know... And, go in reverse and the track changes so oh that's not the way we came in and you know it like it, it it's 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 just the right intensity where it's not like a super crazy roller coaster with like a whole bunch of inversions and corkscrews and you know like a launch coaster and like it's not any of that it doesn't go upside down it almost does once but it doesn't quite i mean there's no like over shoulder harnesses or anything they're just lap bar so you know but um it's just the right intensity. It's almost too intense for some people, but I still think that most, if not all, people would be okay. It looks very intimidating. I'll give it that. But when you're on it, you're just having more fun than anything. Like, seriously, try not to smile on that ride. It, it's impossible. But, um, <coughs> but yeah, it's, it's a great ride. Um, do you know, if, if you don't like Expedition Everest... And it's not, like, for a legitimate reason, like, oh, you know, I, I get nauseous on roller coasters or, you know, I like some kind of, like, actually serious reason. If you like similar rides but you don't like Expedition Everest, why? Explain yourself, please. I, I don't understand. But, yeah. Anyway, so, before we get to our number one pick, in classic Watch Mojo fashion, we gotta get some honorable mentions in here. So these are attractions that didn't make the top 10 because they're not really that impressive, but I still feel are worth mentioning the existence of because they're okay. And if you, you know, you did all the, the highlight attractions in the park and you still have time before they close or you have to leave and you're looking for something else to do, you can do these. Um, all right, so honorable mentions. Uh, Pangani Forest Expedition Trail, um, of course... Um, you know, it's, it's second in the walking trails only to the jungle trek. Um, you know, it's, it's decent. It's got, it's, it's different, but similar. Also about 15, 20 minutes, you get, you know, different animals and stuff like that. So that's, that's fun. Uh, Rafiki's Planet Watch. I kind of feel sorry for this, man. It, nobody cares about it anymore. It closes at like four o'clock and, you know, the, it's it's only open seasonally now, and, you know, it's really, like, falling apart. But, you know, it, there's some redeeming... I mean, you go on a train. I mean, you know, like, Walt loved trains, you know? There's a train. There's a petting zoo. What's not to love about that? You know, there's, like, this little building you go inside, and there's, like, stuff to look at. You know, it's, it's basically, like, interventions at Epcot. Well... Most of Interventions is gone now, but I like how Interventions was at Epcot, but for Animal Kingdom. So, you know, it's it's decent. It's not that impressive or anything, but, you know, it's 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 worth an honorable mention. Uh, let's see. I should give one more. Oh, yeah. I guess I'll put Finding Nemo the Musical on there just because, I mean, <clears throat> it's a puppet show. It's basically like, you know, a middle or maybe a high school uh, talent show or, you know, a play or something. Um, but I mean, I just find it odd that they pick, you know, one of the only, well, not the only, but you know, like uh, there's so many 
Disney movies that are already musicals that they can just, you know, make a live version of. But they pick a movie with not a single song in the whole thing, Finding Nemo, you know? And so a lot of people, like, one of the advantages of, of picking a movie that actually has songs in is that people are going to go in there, like, having seen the movie and having at least a vague idea of what they're going to hear, you know? So, um, so yeah, but with this, it's, you know, oh, okay. But it's 40 minutes long, and, uh, you know, I, I give them credit for that. All right, so on to our number one attraction. Some of you probably already figured out what it's going to be. I'm going to run out of space on here soon, so I'm going to make this brief. Avatar Flight of Passage. I'm sorry. I know a lot of you, myself included, aren't a fan of screen rides or 3D rides or anything like that. I want to go on a five-minute ramp, but I only have like a minute left before this cuts out. So um, it, it's just, it's a, it's a 10 out of 10. It's so immersive. It's so good. It's everything about it, from the queue to the pre-show to... The, Everything about the ride, the way it moves, the way it sounds, the way it feels, the, the way it smells, just everything about it. It's like Turbo Soarin' 9000, you know? Uh, Avatar Flight of Passage, it takes the cake by a long shot. Go on it, um, you know, it's ooey. It's really, it's really something. All right, well, that's my list um, for Animal Kingdom. I'm going to try to get through the other Disney parks, but let me know if there's changes you want me to make these videos. I know it's kind of awkward at times, but just, just bear with me. Thanks for sticking around and watching this whole thing. All right. Um, yeah. See you in the next video.